Hey Cam, can you put in headphones? Cause I feel weird with you listening. Yeah. Thanks. So I've done everything I could to avoid, <laughs> avoid making this video. Cause I don't want to make this video. Not a single part of me wants to do this, to talk about this, to share it, to go into it. Cause it's just exhausting. And I feel like I think about it so much and I try to hide it so much. And I've spent my whole life hiding it that making a video and talking about it makes me feel really vulnerable. It makes me feel like there's no going back. I've said this before, but I've never gone into detail about how it affects me. And I don't want people to look at me differently or to think less of me. But a lot of you have asked me to talk about it. And I sure as hell wish someone else that I looked up to or admired would talk about it because it's been probably the most detrimental, it is still the most detri de bleh, detrimental thing in my life. And I feel like I've gotten to a point where I can actually accept it and talk about it and understand it in ways that I haven't been able to before. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm so proud of myself and I consider myself successful. And so I'm not scared anymore. Like I have nothing to be ashamed of. I have nothing that I need to hide because at the end of the day, pr I'm proud. <laughs> I'm really proud of what I've done and of what I've accomplished, especially with what I've had to go through and the challenges that I've overcame inside of my brain, challenges that nobody can even see. So without further ado, let's get into it. Today we're talking about ADHD, specifically ADHD in adults. I'm gonna share with you guys um, a little a bit about my story, what I've went through and how I've gotten here. Now I've organized, <laughs> I've organized notes in my phone. A part of ADD is that you don't have good organization skills whatsoever. So these are jumbled. I really spent time trying to organize my thoughts, which if you have ADHD, you know that that is probably the most terrifying and daunting task. Sip of my coffee. So what I wanted to do is just go through ADHD. Actually, you know what? I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was, I think 20, I wanna say 20. And it was me going on my own to the doctor to try to get medication because I, I felt like something was wrong with me and I needed it and I did really well in school, so I was never diagnosed with ADHD in school. My family never thought I had it. They never thought any, anything was wrong with me. They just thought that sometimes I would be lazy or I would be forgetful, um, but it kind of allowed me, since I did well in school, to go undiagnosed throughout most of my life, and it wasn't until, until I was an adult and I was in college, and I was still doing well in college by using the same tools that I used in high school, which we'll talk about later. It was just getting harder and harder to fake it and harder and harder to just get by and use the little things and quirks that I had come up with over the years. I've dealt with so many misconceptions about it being just for children or since I am successful, I there's nothing wrong with me or I'm just lazy or it's just an excuse or I'm just not trying hard enough. And these are things that I battle with every single day in my head. So to have other people also say that to me and validate those fears in my head, like what if I am just lazy? What if I am just not trying hard enough? It makes it even worse. So I wanna be here to validate you and let you know that <laughs> you're not lazy. It's not that you're not trying hard enough. Your brain is wired differently and there's nothing you can do about that. But what you can do is find ways to cope find ways to work around it and live a meaningful and productive life. There are ways to work around it, but I think the hardest thing is the misconceptions of other people and how everyone just throws around, oh, I have ADHD, oh, oh, I'm so ADD. No, you're not. You probably don't know <laughs> what it's like. I'm not mad when people do that. It's just the existence in here is something that obviously no one can experience unless they have ADHD and it's constant. All day, every day, trying to fight the way that your brain is wired and it's really exhausting. So I wanted to get into it and just talk about, okay, what is ADHD? Let's break it down by the symptoms and just go over it. Okay, 
Adult ADHD symptoms may include impulsiveness. Now, for me personally, I ran out wrote down some examples. I can so easily, and also, and before I wanna start these, a lot of these are symptoms that maybe everyone is a little bit impulsive, but for people with ADHD, it's like, no, you're really impulsive. You can't control yourself. Your brain just goes Boop. As a child, even, I remember, I've, I get very fixated on things. So if there's something that I want, and this has been since I was a kid. If I want something, I will research everything about it. I will figure out everything there is to know. I will not stop obsessing over it until I get it. And that has been true my entire life. It's a negative because it makes me spend money that I probably shouldn't, but I also get fixated on things that I'm really excited about and that I really, really love. And so when I do like make big purchases, it's usually things that are gonna help me edit or help me make better videos or it's something that I genuinely love because something about ADHD is you can't focus on something unless you really, really genuinely care about it. And that's what is annoying to other people because everyone's like, yeah, of course, like I can't focus on work because it's boring. No, like I can't focus on things that are boring. Like I literally can't, it feels like there are cement blocks tied to my feet. If my brain's not getting dopamine from it, I cannot focus on it. And I know how annoying that sounds and how selfish and undisciplined that sounds, but that's just how my brain is. So when I have to do things like that, which I still do, it's miserable and it takes me so much longer. So impulsiveness is something huge for me. I get this idea, I wanna go for it, and then it kind of affects other things in my life because I, it's really hard for me. Like if I'm thinking about something, I, I can't, I have to finish that thought. I have to finish that impulse. I can't just switch and go to something else. My brain just fixates on that one thing until it's resolved. <laughs> Number two, disorganization and problems prioritizing. That should be my Instagram bio. I am extremely disorganized. I always have been. Like in school, I could never organize my notes. Like in my notebook, it was just random scribbles all over the page. And then I could never figure out really what I was writing down or what I meant. And I looked over and I'd see like everyone else taking like notes and having them in categories and organized. And in my brain, it's kind of like I get all the information and then it, but it's just like splatted on the wall and there are just different pieces of information everywhere and I don't know how to scramble them and organize them, but they're all there and I can find them, but I can't organize them or prioritize them, which gets really difficult because then I get stuck on details that don't really matter and then I don't focus on things that do matter. Like I'll spend five hours working on just this tiny little video effect that I wanna do in one of our fitness martial videos and it's something that is unnecessary, I just, I'm fixated on it, I saw it in my brain and I really wanna make it happen and so I'll spend all day and waste my time trying to learn how to do this one effect and then I'll realize that I don't have time to actually edit the video, which is my job. Like that's the most important thing is just getting the product out and I've just spent my whole day on this tiny little detail that probably no one will notice but I just like, I had to figure it out and I had to get it in there. Or when I'm cleaning, I did this yesterday, Cameron and I had a cleaning day. I spent two hours, damn near, maybe an hour, cleaning the bar cart. Now, all I needed to really do was just like dust it off the top, but like I got the bar cart, I took every piece off of it, I dusted it, I windexed it, I organized everything, I twisted all of like the little bottles so that they were facing the right way, like I made it perfect. Meanwhile, Cameron's cleaned the entire house in the span of the time that I spent just on the bar cart. It's really difficult for me to just do a little bit here and there. Once my brain is focused on something, it's going to focus on it until it is completely done. And that makes it really difficult to accomplish tasks and goals because I have a really hard time spending the correct amount of time on things. Next concept is really just poor time management skills. Basically just hit on that. I have no concept of time. It feels as if Time is coming, not coming at me, it feels like I'm coming towards time. So when people tell me, okay, like you have to be at this place at three o'clock, it takes 30 minutes to get there, I'm gonna start getting ready at like 2.15 because in what world would it take me longer than 15 minutes to get ready? But I don't account for finding my keys, finding my phone, locking the door, checking to make sure all the toys are picked up so the dogs don't get into them, walking to my car, opening the garage door. It's just like those little things that my brain's just like, nope, you can put on pants and a shirt in five minutes, so that's all the time you need. Even though I know that I need more time, 
I convince myself every single time that no, this time, this time is different. You really truly only need just a couple minutes to get ready and it's never ever true. It's never true. But I can't, for some reason, my biggest fear is like getting to a place early and just sitting there because I feel like I'm so behind on everything else in my life that I'd just be wasting so much time. Like obviously there are things that I could be doing here and now to catch up on and things that I've like not been able to finish because I'm always behind on everything. So the idea of like getting to a place early feels like misery because I just feel like a giant waste of time already. Like why would I go waste more time and just sit in a parking lot? Trouble multitasking, this is really easy. I can't multitask, at, not to save my life. If I'm on my phone, if I'm texting, Cameron will be talking to me. And I swear to you, like some, in some part of my brain it registers that he's talking, but I can't hear him, I'm not comprehending it, and nothing in my brain signals me to like switch my attention. It's the most bizarre thing because it's almost like there's two things in my head. One is hearing there's information to be processed, but the processing center is like, you know what? No, that's, don't worry about that, that's not important. And Cameron gets so mad and he thinks that I'm ignoring him. And so it causes so many fights because he's like, you're not respecting me, you're not listening to me. And I'm just like, when did you talk to me? And he's like, Caleb, I've been literally saying your name five times. And I know he's right. I have to be so intentional. Anytime I hear any like stimuli, I have to try to like just drop what I'm doing. And it's not easy, but I'm working on it and I am getting better at it. But oh my God, is it hard. Excessive activity or restlessness. Um, I never thought that I had like the hyperactivity of ADHD. Oh, hello. Get back here, Christy. So I always said I had ADD, but I think that the hyperactivity portion is whenever I've been like having to sit still, I would always bounce my knees. Like they would always be going like this because I just had to get energy out. And I also have a lot of anxiety, so yay. It's kind of like gone hand in hand, my anxiety and hyperactivity, I think, but I always have to be moving. Like Cameron loves like on our days off to just watch TV. Like I cannot do that because I can't just sit still during the day. Like I need to be doing something and tire myself out for the evening. That's why I just exercise so much because I have to move my body or I feel like I'm trapped inside myself. Whenever I'm taking phone calls, I just walk and I'll pace in circles. When I'm just talking to people because it helps me think, it helps me process. That's why it's so hard for me if you watch me in interviews, like I'm always trying to like, move around and talk because I feel so trapped and contained and I am not the type of person just to like sit down in a chair like this and talk like I would love to be doing jumping jacks while I'm talking to y'all right now, but that'd be, that'd be distracting, I'm aware. But I think that's why it helps with my videos and what I do that I'm so like energetic because I need to get that out of me. Poor planning is our next symptom and this is something that I am 1000% guilty of. While trying to run a business, that's been the hardest thing because I met Cameron at a time where I had 100,000 subscribers but I didn't have a business plan because that was just way too overwhelming. I just really like to dance and do what I love but all the boring stuff and like the crossing the I's and dotting the T's switch that, I was not good at that. And so Cameron came along and really helped me. But even, I would say the first four years of the fitness marshal, I felt like I was just living in chaos because I can excel at things that I'm good at. And I can do the dances, I can be personable, I can, I can be the fitness marshal, but I can't organize my day. And I went through a time when I just felt like I had no idea what every day was supposed to be. I didn't know how to structure it, when to set deadlines for myself, and so I just didn't. And I had to have him basically telling me, do this now, then do that. Like he had to start structuring it. And so just this year, this past year, he's been making my calendar for me every single day, every work day. I wake up, I have my schedule lined out. It's like emails, TikToks, meeting, sweat session, choreo, edit the video. Like it is so planned out. And I think for other people that would probably be like, the worst part, because you, you're working for yourself, you should be able to make your own schedule, but it has absolutely changed my life because since I couldn't do that in my brain, it just felt like I was living in a tornado every single day. And now I feel like there is structure and when I have clear goals and deadlines set for me, I can accomplish those and I can meet them because I can see them and they're organized for me. But when I have to organize all the thoughts in my head. So I just end up feeling like I'm doing everything wrong because I have no confidence in myself that I've planned my day correctly. Or if I plan it, then I'm convinced 
that I could have done more because in my brain I'm constantly like you're dumb you're not trying hard enough you need to work harder like other people are accomplishing so much more I'm never convinced that the, what I schedule is truly the, the way it should be scheduled all right we just got a couple more here and it looks like since this is taking so long I think I'm gonna do a part two because I have some other things that I really want to discuss. And the sun is setting. Low frustration tolerance and frequent mood swings. A lot of times it feels like I have like this band wrapped around my head and it's just like tight and it's squeezing me and it's like squeezing all of my emotions. And so it's really hard for me to like laugh or feel joy or happy because I'm just so tightly wound trying to do whatever I'm trying to do or whatever task I'm trying to accomplish. And it feels like just the cord's about to snap. And so I just can't be a person. It's hard for me to like have phone calls or just to talk with family or just engage with friends. If I'm doing something else that's got me kind of wound tight, if someone comes over, if like Haley comes over, I'll struggle to just communicate and be like personable and be friendly because my brain can't switch to that. My brain is still wound tight. It's still focused on whatever it was focused on. Like I can't do the task switching. And so when I'm forced to kind of switch modes, when my brain's not ready to, my emotions kind of go Bleh! If I have to have any kind of like meaningful conversation or confrontation, I just get immediately overwhelmed. Like Haley and Allison and Cameron joke, like I'm the emoji where you just like put your hands on your head. If anything goes wrong, the room starts spinning. I don't know how to communicate effectively. I feel like I'm floating. It's just this like out of body experience where I'm so incredibly overwhelmed that I cannot function. And it's something I'm working on. Problems with following through or completing tasks. This is something that I'm actually really good at in spite of all the other things. So like I, like I said, I did really well in school. I was able to turn in the assignment or get the task done, but sometimes I would just like skip over the details that I would forget or overlook. And that was my biggest struggle in school, but I'm really good at deadlines. So like if I have something due in a week, I will start working on it the night before it's due. And while every other kid has been like taking their time, working on it throughout the week, like everything's great, I can't do that. So I, if I know there's an impending deadline, that will be my motivation to finish it. Unless it's something that I genuinely love and I'm interested in. Impending doom and the fear of failure is a great motivator for me. It just doesn't kick in until like the last minute. But I've, I've also gotten better at that over the years because I feel that impending doom and fear of failure much sooner than I used to. Hot temper and trouble coping with stress. So I don't think I have a hot temper. I'm always generally really kind. All of my anger is directed inward towards myself. So I'm just always mad at me. I'm not really mad at other people. I tend to think everything is my fault, which is a thing that happens when you have ADHD because you just assume that everyone else's brain is working much better than yours. And so whatever it is, it must be you, that's the problem. <laughs> so those are some of the ways that the ADHD affects me. I'm gonna do, I think, a deeper video to explain a little bit more of how it affects me on a deeper level. I have talked to my therapist a lot about this and come to kind of understand how ADHD is kind of my superpower because I was never really great in school. Like I didn't like paying attention, but what I did know how to do from an early age is since I knew I really wasn't good at like the books, I got really good at developing my personality and my people skills. And so those skills are what allowed me to get through high school and get through college because I was really good at charming my way through life. My therapist told me that it was really uh, a survival skill that I developed because I, I had to find a way to survive and progress in life. And I was so motivated to become something and accomplish things. So I knew that I had to get there somehow. And so for me, developing my personality was the way that I used my ADHD because while I couldn't read a book really well, and I don't think I've ever really read a book in my entire life, I could read enough of it to talk about it emphatically and make you interested in what I was saying. And I got really good at developing personal relationships with people and being expressive. And I feel like my ADHD made me craft this larger than life animated personality that you see in the fitness martial videos. So if I didn't have ADHD, if I wasn't so bad at so many other things, then I wouldn't have been able to be this and to have this career. So every time I get down on myself, I'm like, wait a minute, this is your superpower. Like you can do so many incredible things because you have learned how to compensate for what you're not great at. If anyone out there has ADHD, ADD, if you're struggling, just know that it's not something that has to hold you back. It can be your superpower too. Focus less on the things that you're not good at 
and focus more on the things that you excel at because the more you're not good at something, the more you do compensate and so you just can outshine people in so many other areas. I think everyone has their thing that they're really good at and special at and so if you are ADHD, this could be your tool to propel you and make your career or life explode and it just might not look the same way that someone else's does and people aren't gonna understand it and they're gonna call you lazy, they're gonna call you selfish, you're gonna call yourself lazy and you're gonna feel like a failure constantly, which is how I feel every single day. Um, I always feel like I'm not enough, I always feel like I'm failing people and it's you have to constantly remind yourself that your brain does work differently. Those wires are never gonna change. For me, I found coping strategies and people to rely on in my life that have helped me along the way. You can be productive, you can be successful. It's something that's always going to confuse other people and it's something that you're always gonna question in your mind and wonder if you're enough or if you're just making it up or if you're just lazy, but just know that that's not the case. It really is a chemical imbalance in your brain. That's not your fault, but it's not just an imbalance that can hurt you. It's an imbalance that can make you so much cooler and accomplish things that maybe a normal brain couldn't accomplish. I'm gonna probably make another video and talk about other things that I didn't get to. So thanks for watching if you've still made it this far. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the like button and share it with someone if you think they're struggling or if you think this could help someone else or be a resource to them. So thank you so much for joining us and I will see you in the next video.